All right, everybody. It is Thursday morning, March 2nd. So glad that you have joined us. I'm Pastor Paul, and we are journeying through the book of Matthew. If you're, if you're new to this, this is what we essentially do. We're, as we're preaching through the Gospel of Matthew, we're using the week prior to that upcoming Sunday sermon to unpack the text together, to do some exegesis, some hermeneutics, um, some exegetical work, I'm trying to think what other words I could use, to, to get at the meaning of the passage. And in doing so, not just to be dispensers of the truth of God, but it, to, be, to help equip all of us to be better students of the Word, to know how to study the Word of God, how to rightly handle um, the Word of truth. And as we're doing this, um, hopefully you're getting a, a, a better sense of how to go about looking and thinking about a passage, okay? And so um, let me read Matthew 4, 23 through 25, and let's tackle our text for today. And he, meaning Jesus, went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, those having seizures and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis, and from Jerusalem and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan." Now, when we think about Jesus's ministry of word and deed, which is, which is what this paragraph essentially is, it essentially summarizes what Jesus is doing and what Matthew is going to unpack for the next 23 chapters, that Matthew divides this ministry, Jesus's ministry, or conceptualizes it as one of word, proclamation, teaching, and deed, um, helping, serving others. Um, we, we, we talked then about the difference between preaching and teaching under this ministry of the Word, and yesterday we talked about this gospel of the kingdom, all right? Now I want to talk about um, what I would kind of call the holistic approach to ministry and people that the ministry of Jesus represents, Okay. And let me, let me just say that, um, let me do a little backdrop here um, and tell you a way that we're oftentimes tempted to think about spiritual realities, okay? So there was a, there was a heresy in the first century called Gnosticism, which, assim which essentially said that, that things in the spiritual world are good, things in the material world are bad, okay? So, so, so what we want to be doing is growing into a knowledge of truth or enlightenment, um, what we believe, what's in our heart, that's what's important. What we do with our bodies, not so much important, okay? Not so important. It was kind of a platonic understanding of, of spiritual and material matters. It, simply, it really emphasized this idea that it doesn't matter what you do with your body, sexually, what you eat, anything otherwise, because after all, the body's decaying. The body is fading away. The body is not important. It's the spirit. It's the soul that's going to, to live forever. And of course, there's just enough truth in that to be, to be dangerous. And this is why John, for example, in his letters writes, he's, he's, he's writing against the error of Gnosticism. He is attempting to say, or does say, that both body and soul are vital to the purposes of God. In other words, when Jesus returns one day and sets up his rule and reign on earth, we will not be disembodied spirits. We will inhabit resurrected bodies, okay? We will be living as full, whole body persons. And that's the biblical way to understand anthropology in terms of who we are. And we see that, don't we, in the ministry of Jesus. See, a lot of times we think about, well, well, the, the crux of Jesus's ministry was his teaching and preaching. And certainly, without preaching and teaching, there was nothing eternal or enduring about what Jesus was doing. There had to be that solid um, body of truth and knowledge that he is communicating about God and about himself. Yet, he doesn't neglect the physical. 
And it's interesting the way that that Matthew encapsulates this, right? Um, so so let's let's look back at the text. Look at verse 23. He says, healing every disease and every affliction among the people. They brought him sick, those with diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, those having seizures and paralytics, and he healed them. Now, those are all, again, um, places where people were really suffering, okay? So sometimes that suffering was physical. Maybe people were born with a deformity. Um, maybe they um, um, had some sort of physical handicap, right? Um, maybe they had a disease. Maybe they had cancer. Um, we know there's all sorts of examples from the other Gospels, the woman with the issue of blood, remember her. And, and, and these would be things, these, these would be physical diseases that have attacked the body. And of course, that's part of the nature of the fall, right? Is that it's not just our, our, our hearts that are corrupt, that's our bodies. That's why they're, we're all going to die unless Jesus comes back. And because of this, um, our bodies break down. And it says that Jesus is healing them. And again, this, these healings are sort of deposits on this idea that the kingdom is here. And in God's kingdom, permanent kingdom, eternal kingdom, there will be no sickness, no more death, no more physical suffering. And so Jesus is healing people as a sign of that. It also says that he is casting out demons. Now, a lot of times we, um, this is not even a category for us, right? Demonic influence, demonic um, possession, and it, it, it's, it doesn't say here that the, that there were, that these were people who were, he, he doesn't, they, he doesn't go into specifics about what all was happening here. But when we think about those oppressed by demons, we know that sometimes that can take the, the form as often does in the gospels by physical possession. Okay. By, by the fact that demons inhabit a person and are, um, sort of taken over their bodies and minds. And that, and that is a real thing. We, we, we may not be in tune to it as Westerners, but it is a very real thing. And oftentimes things that we may be other, otherwise unable to explain might be explained by demonic possession. Sometimes this may not be possession. It may just be oppression. We know that Satan is prowling around like a roaring lion. We know that um, our battle is not against flesh and blood, which means that in, in one sense, um, every, um, every spiritual choice we make is, 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 is a battle against the, 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 between the spirit and the, the forces of Satan or demonic sort of influence. And sometimes that demonic influence and oppression can be very real. Sometimes it's very subtle just by temptation. Other times it can be very real. I think the point from this text is that not only is Jesus ministering to the physical side of people's problems, he's also ministering to the spiritual side of those problems. He's also ministering to the medical side of those problems. These ideas of people having seizures and paralytics and the fact that he, and the fact that he healed them. And I think what this really helps us to understand, okay, whether someone, and again, these are, these are two categories that we need to think about. There, there's, there's, there are things that we suffer from because of our sin, because of our choices, because of the temptations we experience or the, the choices that we make. Sometimes um, it's not because of our sin, personal sin that we suffer. Sometimes it's because of the effects of sin and it's suffering, whether it's a disease or natural disaster, what have you. The, the point is, is that Jesus looks at all of it, okay, and says, I, I care about that. Jesus um, has a glimpse into all of the things that afflict us as fallen human beings, and he cares for all of those things. And again, this has been a theme all week, the idea that we don't want to separate word and deed, okay, is that, um, I mean, what is the parable of the Samaritan about, okay? 
What is James talking about when he says, you know, if you say you believe in God, but yet don't provide for the widow and the orphan, what, what value is your religion? Well, Jesus dealt in holistic ministry. And that, that's a category that we're to think about in whatever sphere that we're in. So for example, in a counseling context, or maybe you're meeting with a friend, um, you're talking to someone, you're trying to help them, you need to really understand what is going on in every part of the fabric of their lives. What, what's going on for them spiritually, okay? Is, are there particular sins, deceptions, errors that they're wrestling with? Maybe what they're experiencing is just suffering, right? That things that have been done to them, they've been exploited, things have happened to them. Other times, there may be real physical issues going on, right? Um, other times, um, there, there, there can be this, um, and again, I think we can sometimes fall into this, is that, is that if we just give people the right information or share the right kind of truths, this will fix all the problems in their life. Guys, the effects of sin are far more pervasive than that, right? They affect us volitionally in our hearts, our minds, uh, our choices, our feelings. Um, they, they, they impact our bodies. They impact our psyche psychologically, okay? And here's the point. Jesus cares for all of it. Now, for, for, for those who want to help people, those of you who are in the helping professions or you're really working with people, sometimes these needs can be overwhelming, right? And sometimes you can be overwhelmed because you're trying to meet all those needs. And here's what you need to know. You can't. And I can't. Only Jesus can. What we can do is in the place that God has gifted us, whether it's medically or biblically or spiritually or as a counselor or as a doctor or as a friend, whatever, whatever, wherever God has gifted you, whatever he has called you to, minister to the person in that way. While at the same time, helping that person to understand what it is that they also need, right, from other people. Uh, what they need in these other areas of their lives. Someone might need to be greatly encouraged and prayed over, but also encouraged to see a doctor, right? Someone may need to be exhorted to move away and repent of sin, while at the same time, talk to someone about the suffering that they have been a part of in the past. The point is, is that none of us are Jesus, thankfully, but Jesus is Jesus, thankfully. And Jesus cares about the whole person. And part of being his people, his arms and legs, is helping to bring care to the whole person in whatever form we see that represented. And so as God calls us to play our part by doing what we're called to do in that situation, and then helping people get the other things they need as a part of their life as well. Okay, that is going to wrap things up for today. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll be the last devotional of the week before we head into the weekend. So let me pray for us. Lord, we want to care about the whole person because you've cared about the whole person, body, mind, soul. So we pray now that you would give us a discerning ear, discerning eyes, hands, hearts to meet people where they are and to love them. And Lord, we ask that you would do this through the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray.